Hi, this is Sam Weigel with V1 Rotate, and this week we're going to talk about real world soft and short build up. Hold on a minute, let me check this. Huh. Oh, well, this is pretty interesting. It involves a regional airline being silly and doing something really dumb and maybe even illegal. All right, new plan. Hi, this is Sam Weigel with V1 Rotate, and this week we're going to talk about a regional airline being silly and doing something really dumb, maybe even illegal. Okay, so you know last month when I asked, somewhat clickbaitishly, is the pilot shortage over? And my answer was, yeah, no, not really, but it is evolving, and it never was quite a shortage of inexperienced pilots, and now it's not even a shortage of 1,500 hour pilots. Well, my apologies, Republic Airways apparently saw that video, or otherwise got the word, because clearly someone over there is thinking, Wait, we have more applicants than jobs for the first time in forever? Sweet, we can go back to being jerks to pilots again. Last week, Republic made a huge stir when it came out that they are forcing all new hire pilots to sign a four-page legal agreement, no, I'm using scare quotes, we'll get back to that, which contains some pretty eye-raising terms. There's a lot to unpack here, let's dive right in. I, the pilot, wish to enroll in the Republic Airways new First Officer Advancement Pathway Program. Republic and pilot agree, Republic is not currently recruiting additional new First Officers and is solely hiring First Officers that are committed to 1. Becoming a Republic Captain as expeditiously as possible and 2. Working as a Republic Captain for a period of at least two years after Captain Upgrade. Pilot will aggressively pursue the path to Captain Upgrade, meaning Pilot is willing to pick up extra flight time available in addition to his her monthly schedule in order to fly as many hours as are reasonably available to make Captain Upgrade as soon as possible, i.e. within 12 to 18 months from day to hire, but no later than 24 months from day to hire. All right, the next paragraph reiterates, fly as many hours reasonably available to him, her, and as the requirement to maintain exemplary attendance and flight record. No word on how sick or fatigue calls are handled. Interesting. If the pilot is in violation of any of these requirements, then Republic, at its sole discretion, may remove the pilot from the program and terminate the agreement. I presume this means they're fired? It doesn't say. There is a $60,000 bonus over 18 months, that's kind of standard these days, but if you leave or are fired, you gotta pay this one back. Here's the craziest part, non-compete and liquidated damages. Upon entering this agreement, Pilot agrees to make at least a three-year employment commitment to Republic, which specifically includes a two-year commitment as captain. In the event Pilot failed to fulfill this employment commitment, Pilot agrees to pay the sum of $100,000 to Republic, not prorated. And furthermore, in the event Pilot resigns or is terminated, he or she warrants that he or she will not work as a pilot for any commercial airline with routes that compete with Republic for the flying public in the United States for one year. All right, last page here. They might up the bonuses, but not for you, sucker. Uh, quit and they'll sue you in Indiana courts. And when that non-compete is inevitably ruled illegal, you're still on the hook for $100,000 and the bonuses and the attorney's fees. I get what Republic is doing here. The regional business model is all but dead. They can't get FOs to stick around because even working for the likes of Frontier is better than Republic. They don't have enough captains, so they're working their current captains to the bone, leading them to all try to get out ASAP. And so they're thinking, you know what would create really loyal employees who stick around and work hard and do what we say if they're legally required to do so, or we f them financially and professionally. First, I don't know why anyone would sign this. You'd be better off instructing or flying part 135. 
at a time when the majors are hiring thousands of pilots per year, agreeing to stay any place, much less a crappy regional, for four years is akin to career suicide. This agreement basically just guarantees you're going to be stuck at a place full of pissed off pilots who can't legally leave, which sounds miserable as well as not necessarily the safest environment. Like seriously, indentured servitude is so 18th century. Who the hell came up with this thing anyways? Now one thing I'm really curious about is Republic pilots are unionized. They're not Alpha, they're Teamsters. I was Teamsters at Horizon. They're a truckers union, airline work isn't necessarily their forte, but they do enforce their contracts. And this would seem to be a blatant violation. It turns out, yep, they've already filed the grievance and delivered this broadside. Forced upgrades and mandatory overtime have been rejected by negotiating committees over several negotiating cycles. That the company would impose them as a condition of employment is a circumvention of our CBA we will vigorously challenge. Let's summarize what is being asked of new pilots on day one of INDOC. Give up the right to determine if you choose to upgrade. Does not matter if the forced upgrade requires a two-leg commute while you are currently home-based. Give up the right to bid schedules, take time off, or otherwise create a work-life balance best suited to your preferences as you will be required to fly as much as possible, including on your days off. It is the company's sole discretion to determine if you have met this particular metric. On day one of Indoc, you must know if Republic is the best fit for you and your family for the next three years minimum. If upgrades stop tomorrow, you are still on the hook until you have fulfilled the obligation of two years as a captain. This $100,000 is not a repayment for any bonus you have received. It is $100,000 of your own money, plus any bonus you must forfeit, plus both yours and their attorney fees if you choose to challenge it in the court and jurisdiction the company has chosen. This agreement is egregious, and we are hopeful the company will reconsider its position before it needs to be settled via grievance, arbitration, or litigation. We hope to see new classes filled with quality pilots who have chosen Republic because of its merits over our competitors. We believe this agreement, even before we get entangling over its enforceability, will have a chilling effect on the quantity and quality of the pilots willing to choose Republic to begin their careers. The Teamsters memo contains a number of other points regarding confusing and contradictory language in the agreement, something that I noticed from the get-go. I got to wondering, did an actual lawyer sign off on this thing? Is it actually even enforceable? Now, I hasten to add, I am not a law talking guy, I'm not even well versed in bird law, but I do happen to have an airline pilot friend who is also an aviation attorney. Let's see what she has to say about this, shall we? All right, so we have today with us uh, Meredy Smith. Uh, Meredy, thanks for being on V1 Rotate. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so you and I have at least one airline uh, in our past. Nowadays, you fly for, I think you call it, uh, Hot Pants Airlines. <laughs> I understand that you used to be an aviation attorney. Uh, tell me about that. That is correct. Technically, I still am. I'm just inactive right now. I was furloughed from that airline we share in the past, mm -hmm. and I went to law school. And when I graduated, I worked pretty large aviation law firm. We did a lot of insurance defense, worked a lot of uh, crashes and other incidents. Looking at this new hire agreement, as an attorney, what was your reaction? I was concerned that a lot of it I don't think would be enforceable. A lot of it is very questionable. I, uh, I was a little bit astounded when I first read it. One of my primary concerns was the non-compete. Uh, Non-competes generally are about, you know, like, let's take the tech industry where they're pretty common. Right. It's the idea of I work for Facebook and I have all of this private Facebook knowledge. And so if I go and I immediately work for Twitter, right, I can take all that with me. And that can be very damaging to the company. Right. Pilots, we don't have anything competitive. We don't know what happens behind the scenes, even at our own airlines, generally right. speaking. We don't know much. Yep. What we do know is generally public, the schedules, the routes. Um, that's nothing that is private or that you can take to someone else. But I think it would be very unlikely to have a court allow that to stay in force. The $100,000 liquidated damages, potentially, that, that has a better chance of sticking? It has a better chance. The problem is it's just not 100%. Right. And so it's, and there's it's... a lot of risk. I think you could argue kind of a lack of consideration. Um, these contracts in the 135 world and 91 world have often been found to be invalid. 
right. on similar lines. Yep. So, you know, there, there's an argument. There's arguments to be mm-hmm. made. Something to think about is as a professional, the courts are going to assume you're intelligent. You, you are a pilot. You are in a highly respected career. You are an educated person who signed a contract, who was able to read that contract, who wasn't coerced into that contract. Yep. So that is going to make it a little bit harder to argue that I don't have to pay this money back. Right. So it sounds like, you know, obviously not being a Indiana attorney, you're not going to give anybody legal advice here. But if you you have a friend that is a 1500 hour pilot that wants to get that first regional job and they even want to fly for Republic, but they're not sure they should sign this and they come to you for advice, you're telling them. I'm going to want them to think about it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to caution them about the realities of these outcome. I'm going to tell them to take it seriously. Don't think that I can sign this and not comply later on. It's a very unbalanced contract, not so much that it would just be completely void, I think, on its face, but it is very much in favor of the employer. There's a lot of vague language. In this current market, I don't think it's competitive, and that's more as a pilot than an attorney. Well, thanks for coming on, Meredy, and I appreciate your expertise. Well, there you have it, folks. Look, I know that because the hiring market has been so good for the last two years, a lot of you expected to be at a regional airline the minute you hit 1,500 hours. Perhaps you're feeling a bit frustrated, maybe even a bit desperate. The airlines know this. They all have industrial psychologists on staff or retainer. Don't let them use your frustration to convince you to do something dumb that has the potential to harm your career. For more great content for new and aspiring professional pilots, join me here at flymag.com every first and third Friday of the month.